Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fair Lady. So coming up in this episode, I'm about to start on remaking all the cold side piping, modifying the intercoolers and all that intakey sort of stuff, you know. So I will be upgrading all of the original intake and intercooler piping from the factory 2-inch steel setup to a 2.5-inch mandrel bend aluminium setup which also means I've got a little bit of a problem with the intercoolers that came on the vehicle. They're an aftermarket intercooler. I'll get one off the car and we'll have a bit of a look. So as you can see folks there, not a bad looking sort of an intercooler. Aftermarket, looks like it's about four inches thick. Um, cast end tanks with cast inlets and outlets on it. I've actually given these a bit of a clean up since I first got the vehicle because they were just covered in corrosion and looked really hideous. They actually have a bit of crap inside them. I'm yet to clean these guys out. They both need a really decent flush out with hot soapy water and whatever it's going to take to sort of get them clean. Um, but the problem that I have with them, folks, is um, two inch. Obviously made as a replacement for the factory intercoolers with two inch inlet and outlets. To the best of my knowledge, these intercoolers were purchased by one of the previous owners as part of a group buy on one of the um, Australian 300 ZX forums. Um, they, you know, they're pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable, I guess. Um, the casting's probably not the best casting I've seen on the end tanks, but it's definitely not the worst. But the problem that you have with uh, with car stuff, folks, is you tend to lose a bit of um, internal diameter, particularly on these sorts of things due to the thickness of the casting and often the unevenness of the casting. Um, you know, they can be pretty rough and uh, even though this is two inch, compared to a normal pipe, the internal diameter is probably more like, God, I don't know, inch and three quarter or something. Yeah, the, the ID on uh, normal sort of uh, two inch aluminium mandrel bent tubing is about 47 and a bit, whereas that's oh, 42, possibly even worse in places. Yeah, yeah it's about 42, so you can see it's undersized. Just do the casting and all that sort of stuff. So, in order for me to go to two and a half inch uh, piping in and out of this intercooler and in and out of the whole uh, the whole system, we either need to get some new intercoolers or modify these. And after all, folks, this is the Aussie Shed. So, guess what we're going to do? And speaking of which. Let me bring out something I've prepared earlier. I'll just pull back a little bit here, folks. Uh, all right, so you can see I've already done this one. So it now has a two and a half inch going in. Where are we? You can see here, folks direct comparison this is the inlet that i cut off it the difference in size here between the two uh, this is a cast piece as well i've actually turned it on my uh, on my lathe because the casting was really really terrible on this thing and it was it was like this it was just thick and wonky and just really really rough like just covered in heaps of grit still attached to it from when it was cast Made it look like it had been cast on a dirt floor out the back of nowhere in India somewhere. Absolutely hideous piece. Fortunately, there was enough meat on it so I could turn it down and get rid of a lot of the stuff. Most of the cleaning up I did on the inside to get it nice and consistent. And, um, you know, obviously you can see it turned out pretty good. So uh, that's what we've got there. And our outlet side from the inner cooler, you can see this is the, this is the piece that I cut off. Again, huge difference in size in every way. Like you can see, the casting is very kind of you know 
bit on the average side, a bit wonky and everything. Okay, so the biggest issue with doing this, folks, was that this section across here is only capable of, of taking a 50 mil pipe. You can see on this one, folks, that your, your two inch inlet takes up the full width of the end tank over here. So in order to be able to uh, do this, what we've got to do is squash the pipe on the sides, flatten it out, expand it that way, flatten it that way, and then cut out the hole a lot bigger in the end tank so that we don't have any restriction in there and fit it up and weld it there. So there's quite a bit of work in the fit up side on this, on this pipe here. Uh, to get it looking any any sort of good and you'll have to excuse my welding folks It takes me a while to get my um, Welding skills back in order like I've been going all right on the stainless recently again It takes a while to get my hand in with any of the sort of welding tasks if you're not welding all the time Particularly for me. Maybe I'm just hopeless, but it seems to take me Yeah, you know, a little while before I start getting any good at it again So um, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit gnarly, but it's it's all right. It'll do the job anyway same with this one on the top here, you know, it's a bit friggin' average, but mate, it'll do the job. So, uh, yeah, so quite a lot of fit-up work on this one. This one, very easy, just a matter of, uh, you know, knocking it out and, um, you know, putting this new piece in. That's the other piece there that I've got ready to go in. Again, substantial difference between the two. Um, so that's ready to go. We've just got to uh, get this intercooler sorted out. So I'll get rid of this guy that's already done and we'll focus back on the one that we're doing. So the first thing we've got to do, folks, is we've got to get rid of this. Now, how I did the last one, I chopped that off on the bandsaw. Then I used this hole saw here to just go in on the nub that was left. It actually gave me something good to hold the hole saw as I sort of went in. And, uh, and then just drilled through. And then just had to sort of file it up and clean it up a bit because it is a little bit undersized, which I wanted. I certainly didn't want to go oversized with the hole uh, to be able to sort of, you know, tidy it up myself and, and get the fit just right. So let's take this over to the bandsaw and whip that off. That's that guy. That's what we're left with there, folks. She's a bit gnarly looking. You can see it's really dirty inside. That's some of the shit that was being sucked into the intake system by having bloody uh, rip, rips and tears in all the intake piping and, uh, you know, just, oh, just being such a piece of crap. So, yeah, that's gone. And that's what's coming. <laughs> all right so like i say now we just got to get a hole saw we'll just go straight over the top of that and we'll just bore a hole right through that so i think we'll whack this in the vise and we'll get into it That's what we're left with, folks. Not quite big enough, like I say, for our new piece, but uh, but very close, very close indeed. Um, a little bit of a uh, little bit of filing, a little bit of sanding, and uh, that'll fit up. No worries. I'll bevel the edge. I've already got a little bit of a bevel in this, just so I can get pretty reasonable penetration. Ah, when uh, when I start welding it, so um, I'll clean this up a bit, eh?
All right, it's all tacked on. I've just been called away for coffee by Mrs. Aussie Shed, so I'll go and have a coffee. I think I'll weld this up because the camera is a pain in the ass when I'm trying to weld. And uh, I'll show you when it's finished, so I'll be back. And as promised, folks, there it is. It's all done. I really hate welding shitty cast pieces because often they just turn out like shit, but... It's a pain in the ass to weld, but it turned out pretty reasonable. I guess I'm pretty happy with it. So next thing we've got to do is we've got to cut this guy off. Now that's not as easy to cut off. It won't fit under either of my band saws. So I'm going to put this in the vise and I'm actually going to cut that off with a reciprocal. So I'll get set up folks and we'll just whip that off. Alrighty, that's pretty solid. A rough line to follow. Here I go, wish me luck. Doesn't want to start. How about I make a little bit of a cut with the uh, the grinder? You can see the obvious limited flow potential by the size of the casting and the hole that we've ended up there with. What do we got there? So like I say, two inches about 47 internally on uh, just mandrel bend stuff. 39.9. That's very, very restrictive. Very, very restrictive. It shows folks you don't know what's at the bottom of your body casting, do you? Be much better if it looked like that. <laughs> anyway, it will soon enough, folks. It will soon enough. So what I think I'll do, folks, I'll uh, I'll grind that back down flush with the face of the of the end tank there. Get rid of a lot of that. And then uh, I'll mark it out and sort of show you how much we've got to remove. But uh, I'll grind that down off camera, just because, you know, who wants to watch that? And uh, I'll turn it back on when we've got that ready to be marked out. And I'll, uh, I'll squash a bit of two and a half inch pipe up in the vise to give us an idea where we have to go. And um, I'll turn the camera back on. And that's roughly what we're left with, folks. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to get my old friend Mr. Sharpie. I'm just going to black all of this out. And then I'm going to scribe how much we need to cut out of here. Which will be interesting. So I've got a bit of two and a half inch pipe here folks. Uh, just to cut off from a mandrel bend. And this is a piece that I've uh, put in the vise and just given a bit of a squash so that we can actually fit it on this width that we have here because we don't have full width to use a two and a half inch pipe. If we did that, it'd be hanging over the side too much, you know. So squashing it down is the way to go to sort of get it in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it and see how much we actually need to remove.
And there you go, folks. Don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera, but uh, that's about what we need to take our hole out to. So I might get stuck into that with a die grinder and uh, get that all out. And uh, we'll come back for another look. And that's what we roughly ended up with there, folks. You can see it's uh, sort of quite a, an oval shape. We take up the full width of the end tank that we have here. And as you saw from the layout, we've come up quite a ways. Now, uh, I've made up a piece to weld onto there. This guy here. It started off as a 45 degree mandrel bend, which I've sort of ovaled up and cut down all the right sizes and angles. I've bead rolled the end just because it's easier to do it now than it is once it's on. And um, yeah, so that's that's going to be going on here. So I'm at the point of getting ready to tack this up. So um, I might uh, I might do that, eh? I must say that was pretty bloody horrible to weld. <laughs> the shit that came out of that casting then. <sighs> but it's done now and that's all that matters. So how about we go and fit it up onto the car with the other one. Let's see what they look like. Well, I must say, folks, I'm pretty happy with that. It's uh, quite a relief now having that done and now having intercoolers with two and a half inch in and out going to them. Fan-bloody-tastic. Well, that's taken up all the time for this video, folks. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time for any more stuff, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So there you go, how to modify your aftermarket intercoolers from two inch to two and a half inch, at least now. You know, it's one step further to getting our two and a half inch piping all done. So next week I'll be modifying the compressor covers on both the turbos. The driver side turbo needs the whole inlet cut off it and quite a bit of modification doing to that. That's going to be uh, quite a bit involved in, in setting that one up. Passenger side turbo needs the outlet cut off it and an elbow welded onto it. Uh, all of this stuff is in preparation to have everything ready before we start running all of our piping, you know. We've, we've really got to know where we're coming from and where we're going and have all that sort of stuff sorted before we start throwing the piping in. Anyway, folks, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, folks, and click the bell so you get uh, notifications of any new videos and all that sort of stuff. And as always, folks, I'll bloody see you on the next one. Cheers.